16th Street and Georgetown, the Brickyard, heaven on earth. This historic racetrack is known by many different names all around the world, but for this month of May, drivers on the Mazda Road to Indy will simply call this track home. The month of May in Indianapolis have been synonymous with each other for a hundred years, and now we're finally here for the Grand Prix of Indianapolis here on Road to Indy TV. Five hundred and one miles, and not too many weeks ago, Mazda Road to Indy drivers packed up and left their most recent race at the Grand Prix of Alabama. We're here in Indianapolis this weekend for the Grand Prix of Indy. After several new names were called to the podium in Alabama, even more new young faces are hoping to have their names called up here in Indianapolis. Victor Franzoni and his team, Arms Up Motorsports, stood on the podium for the first time in 2016 back in Alabama. Franzoni enters May 7th in the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship, powered by Mazda Fight, trailing point leader Parker Thompson by a mere 30 markers. U-Ghost Racing driver Will Owen left Bama with a pair of top five finishes behind his teammate Garrett Grist. Owen currently seventh in points, while Grist is a solid third. The Yungos Racing drivers are chasing the team Pelfrey machines of Aaron Tielitz and Pato Award, who roll into Indianapolis as the point leaders in Pro Mazda presented by Cooper Tires. Five races into the Indy Lights Championship presented by Cooper Tires, and five different drivers have been the first to cross the finish line. The big question is, will we see a sixth different winner at the Grand Prix of Indianapolis? We're here at Dawson's on Main, here in Main Street in Speedway, Indiana. And we're having a fantastic dinner. And I'm lucky to be joined by Indy Lights driver from Bellardi Auto Racing, Felix Rosenquist. Felix, how are you doing? Very good, I think. Yeah, I had a good, fun race today at the, at the GP circuit. Uh, first time for me here, obviously, as every circuit. But uh, yeah, we had a real, I think it was probably the best race of the year. I'll tell you what, that race was fantastic to watch and everybody that I was with on pit lane was ooing and aahing and let's just get right to it. Coming from Sweden over here to the United States for racing, you are spending a ton of time in airports and in airplanes. Or does anything bizarre pop out when you think about all your time traveling this year? What's really funny is sometimes you wake up and you think you're in, in, in a different country than like you wake up and you, and you take the wrong turn out of the bed to go to, to the bathroom because you think you're still in Austria or something and you're in I Indianapolis. Always, you know? I always think I'm still in Austria and I've never yeah. even been. <laughs> what kind of music are you listening to when you're flying? A lot of, uh, lot of, lot of rock, a lot of, lot of rap? I uh, try, try to listen to something instrumental, probably in quite low volume, so you have to stay concentrated to hear it and then that makes you tired so you fall asleep. That's genius. Like yeah. I'm not even kidding you. That's, I, I can never sleep on planes. And it's probably because I'm playing my Taylor Swift so loud. <laughs> but that's a really good theory. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. You turn the instrumental version of a song on and keep it kind of low volume. Yeah. And you're spending all your mental energy focusing on it. And then the next thing... You wake up in Indianapolis. Or in Austria. Exactly. So when you're not traveling and you're not racing, is there anything you like to do for fun when you're not traveling or you're not at a racetrack? Anything recreational that you enjoy doing? Well, I, I love skiing. I basically started skiing before I raced, and it's kind of the same thing, you know, it's uh, by carrying speed and doing the right lines and all that. So I think that's where it all started. And I, I still love to do it, even if I don't really have a lot of time for it. I try to do maybe one or two weeks per year. Then I, I like all sort of extreme sports. I love skateboarding, like yeah, BMX and all that kind of stuff. What's just maybe coming over to America, what's just one of the things that totally caught you off guard? What's one of the things that when you first started coming over here, you were like, whoa, those guys. I think, I think it's the fact that people just come up and talk to you in, on the street. Like you can just, you stand at the stop sign, mm -hmm. ready to cross the road. And right. someone says like, yeah, how's your day been? Like, I don't like, know you. As a Swede, I mean, Sweden is not famous for being like social. We are quite quiet up there. And from coming there to... I was going to say, you're a very cold person. <laughs> I'm a robot. Yeah. No, from that to actually having people like, just coming up, talking to you on the street, is quite a big difference. And I'm just like, yeah. Maybe they recognize you. I think that's going to wrap it up. We're going to dig into my not Swedish meatballs and your Caesar very salad. Named after the Roman king, I think. Emperor. I don't know. Yeah, emperor, whatever. And then I, here, here at Dawson's, they even have old school milk jugs with with beer in them. Yeah. 
You want one of those? Save it for tomorrow. Save it for tomorrow. After the win, right? Exactly. All right. Felix Rosenquist from Bellardi Auto Racing. Felix, enjoy that salad, because I would certainly not. Thank you. We're now inside race control here at the famed Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and I'm lucky to be joined by Indy Lights race director Tony Cotman, and he's going to tell us something uh, we may not have known. Tony? Did you know we use 50 television screens to monitor the race? We uh, also monitor local and national weather, and we can pull up replays within about five seconds. As the Mazda Road to Indy continues to crisscross North America, it takes teams, drivers, families, and even wannabe TV hosts to all kinds of beautiful cities with great local attractions. This weekend, we're in Indianapolis, Indiana for the Grand Prix of Indianapolis, but more specifically, we're in Speedway, Indiana. And right now, we're at Speedway Indoor Karting. We're gonna take a few laps and then tell you about the rest of this beautiful city. As a river walk cuts through downtown Indianapolis, water parks, historic fairgrounds, and countless other fun family activities can be found in the city. As the capital of the state of Indiana, Indianapolis has been nicknamed the racing capital of the world. Indianapolis is home to over 850,000 people and millions of racing dreams. Racing is a sport of passion, and you've got to have a passion for this sport when you spend most of your life in it. This weekend for our team profile, we're in the John Comiskey Racing Transporter, and I'm with John Comiskey. John, you've been in this sport for a pretty long time. I'm guessing it's because you have a great passion for the sport. Yeah, yeah. We uh, I started when I was pretty young. I worked on airplanes when I was uh, out of college, and that's what I went to school for. And then uh, always wanted to go racing, so I kept going to the races. and kept bugging a certain team manager at Penske and uh, he finally got mad at me, threw me a shirt and I had a job. Penske, not many names are more synonymous with IndyCar racing than Rogers. Talk about working for a guy like that. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, uh, of course I was young and silly and uh, probably didn't appreciate it what I, how I should have, but it was great. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better uh, place to be. In. When we were talking earlier, you said you've been in racing for 27 years, so 25 years ago when you were being young and silly, as you put it, you were with Roger Penske and that team. Now you're here with John Comiskey Racing, your own team. Do you use it as an opportunity to give some younger and silly kids an opportunity like they gave you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if we do our job well, they move on in two years. And if they're successful at the next level, then we've done what we're supposed to do here. And it's really fun and gratifying to see that. We've got uh, part of the team. We do uh, some interns with IUPUI's engineering uh, program. And it's fun to be able to show them what it really is like in the racing world, not just in the classroom. Let's switch gears a little bit. We see your cars over here, Isla Ogren and Lucas Cole, two pretty talented young drivers racing in the USF 2000 ranks this season. Uh, what's it like managing Lucas and Isla? Isla, the only female on the Mazda Road to Indy. Well, Isla's great to work with. Uh, she's in her second year in the series. Lucas is in his first, so he's a rookie. Uh, he's been um, kind of straight out of go-karts and some small car stuff up in Brazil. Uh, a little more of a challenge with him simply because he's a rookie and that's fine, that's, that's what it's all part of. He's been improving every time. Isla is, like I said, really good to work with. We've got to try to make her a little more mean. She's a girl, so she's too nice. How do you, how do you go about that? How do you go about making a driver more mean? Do you, make, do you make fun of them like you made fun of me before this interview started? Yeah, I'm mean to them, so then, you know. It broke me down to tears. So let's talk about the Mazda Road to Indy. Obviously coming from the top level at IndyCar where you were, what does the Mazda Road to Indy mean to you as far as progression for the drivers, for the mechanics? Just talk about the program. Well, I think it's a very good program. It's one of the few programs that if you win, you're able to get enough funding to keep moving up the ladder. And for us, it's, like I said, it's, it's really gratifying to see if you can do that and help somebody move on. That's kind of why I wanted to do this. I, I was very, very lucky to work with some great people in my career, and I wanted to be able to pass that on. John, thanks so much for stopping and talking to us, and uh, best of luck the rest of the month of May. Thanks, Tony. Thank you very much.
The sun shined bright on Indianapolis Motor Speedway Friday as each of the three series qualified and ran their first race of the weekend. Sunday, however, greeted racers and teams with overcast skies and low temperatures. USF 2000 action in Indianapolis got off to a dramatic start after Luke Gavin's pole winning lap time was disallowed after he took an extra lap after the checkered flag flew in qualifying. Inheriting Gavin's pole position was young Australian Anthony Martin. Capitalizing on the top starting spot, Martin scored the race one win ahead of Parker Thompson and Victor Franzoni. Race number two saw the Canadian Parker Thompson grab his third win on the year as he held off Victor Franzoni and hard luck kid Luke Gavin. You can't spell Pro Mazda without PO. Ironically, Pato awards initials. The young Mexican driver was untouchable on the Grand Prix circuit in Indianapolis. Award won both races on the weekend, bringing his win total to five out of six races so far in 2016. Joining Award on the podium in race number one were Yukos Racing pilots Will Owen and Jake Parsons. In race number two, it was Award's teammate Aaron Tielitz finishing second and Yukos Racing driver Will Owen scoring back-to-back -back podiums on the weekend. Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires Racing this weekend at the Grand Prix of Indianapolis was incredible. With constant battles at nearly every position on track, the points picture stayed tight. In race one, it was pole sitter Ed Jones holding off a late charge from Dean Snowman to cross the line first. In race two, drama on the warm-up lap may have delayed the start of the race, but it certainly did not delay the action. In the end, it was the calm Dean Snowman moving from second in race one to scoring his first Indy Lights win of his career in race number two. And that concludes another episode of Road to Indy TV. The racing here at the Grand Prix of Indianapolis was, as the kids say, on fleek. Don't worry, more great action from the racing capital of the world will be coming up soon as we come back to Indianapolis when USF 2000 and Pro Mazda head to Lucas Oil Raceway just up the street and then it'll be the Indy Lights driver's turns to take on the Big Oval in the Freedom 100. For Road to Indy TV, I'm Tony Laporta. We'll see you down the road.